Built in 1924 near the Alamo, the historic building is 13 stories and built in a Gothic style, complete with gargoyles. The idea for the city's first medical arts building was devised by J.M. Nix and architect Ralph Cameron. The top physicians and surgeons would be able to practice their professions at this cutting-edge medical center. It would not only be the greatest medical center west of the Mississippi, but it would also be the first skyscraper. The designers etched gargoyles all over the building's exterior, each one suffering a different ailment. Hundreds of doctors and physicians were accommodated in the medical arts building, the top levels were used for surgeries. In the basement, there was a mortuary and a crematorium. For decades, the structure was one of the top hospitals in the country, and it remained in use until 1976, when it was converted into an office building. The structure was renovated into a hotel. As part of the Alamo Plaza Historic District, the Emily Morgan was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1977. The hotel first opened its doors in 1984, but it wasn't until 2012 that it was transformed into what it is now. The hotel was purchased by the Doubletree Hilton Company, which spent millions of dollars renovating it to make it a five-star resort. The Alamo's official hotel was established. The building's namesake Emily West, worked as a maid at the new Washington Association Hotel at Morgan's Point, near present-day Houston, for James Morgan. Commander Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, the same general who had captured the Alamo just a few months before, kidnapped her and her co-workers and held them captive as well as a few residents. Santa Ana's army was to face Sam Houston's army at Buffalo Bayou, thus the party was sent there. After the battle to which Santa Ana was defeated, Emily sought refuge with artillery officer Isaac Moreland, who helped her get back to New York by granting her passage across the country. Emily's acts are still honored. Emily West, sometimes known as Emily Morgan, is a famous figure in Texas history. She is now known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. The crematorium and morgue were both located in the basement, making it the creepiest area of the structure. Hundreds of bodies were incinerated over the medical center's lifetime, implying that there are still some restless ghosts about. Only staff have access to the basement, and most people who have the misfortune of having a duty there, detest having to go down there. The staff claimed to have seen light orbs floating around, and heard disembodied voices, some of which were shouting in anguish. The worst aspect is the stench of burning flesh coupled with the dense humid air, which makes most people queasy upon entering the basement. On the third floor, the sound of humming woke a guest in the middle of the night, and she saw the apparition of a young girl sitting at the foot of her bed. She was supposedly approached by a small girl who asked if she wanted to sing. The guest was awakened again the next night, about the same hour as the night before. This time though it felt as if someone had climbed into bed with her, with her recognizing the indentation in the bed, and the sensation of someone pushing against her side. The woman noted a rapid drop in temperature on both instances. Another visitor on the same floor, was awakened by the sound of a woman singing in the same room. The operating rooms of the medical arts building were on the 12th story which is currently home to Emily Morgan's swimming pool. The pool is said to have been built from stainless steel from operating tables. Whether or whether the legend is true, the 12th level is where many of the strange happenings occur. Guests frequently hear hospital stretchers being pushed up and down the corridor late at night, and they frequently see apparitions of nurses and physicians continuing to work, as if the hospital had never closed. Lights and bathroom faucets have also been reported to switch on and off on their own by guests. Some people have even reported seeing their doors open and close at random, as if a ghost had entered their room. The seventh story is said to be the most haunted in the structure, and anyone wishing for a scare should rent a room there. The ghost of a bride has been seen by many visitors and workers, but no one understands what her link to the hotel is, or why she seems to be locked on the seventh level. They do know though that she's terrible enough, to drive people fleeing to the lobby in the dead of night. At 3 AM, guests may be startled awake by a blood-curdling scream. Others have reported seeing her apparition emerge in their rooms at random, and then vanish through the walls. Worst of all is when a guest looks in the mirror, and they see her staring back. The Emily Morgan Hotel's 14th floor is technically the 13th and last floor, but like other skyscrapers, 
the building refuses to recognize the 13th floor to prevent bad luck. The hotel's 14th floor was not spared by this transfer, it is still haunted. The fragrance of the hospital persists on the top level, which houses the most opulent rooms. The stench of medication and ointment has been reported by visitors, which makes sense given that this was one of the medical arts building's surgery facilities. Some visitors report to see sights from the old hospital out of the corner of their eye, which then fade away as they look over. It's typical for an elevator to detect flaws, and the great majority of haunted elevator claims can be traced back to defective wiring. The elevators of the Emily Morgan on the other hand, have been thoroughly inspected and no faults have been discovered. They keep going from the 6th to the 7th level and back. They go past the floor that was requested, and for some reason transport the guests to the hotel basement, which was originally the mortuary, where they refused to go back up. Another guest's room on the 11th floor, was plagued by the sound of clanking shackles. She was so terrified that she called the front desk, and the woman who answered the phone assured her that if the difficulties persisted, she would receive a full refund. The guest recounted the discussion to the desk clerk the next morning, who informed her that a woman had not worked the previous night's shift. There's no question, that in addition to the numerous tragedies that must have occurred on these floors while it was a hospital, the Alamo's dead haunt the hotel's hallways. In 1836, more than 600 soldiers were killed in battle, and their remains were gathered and burned. Many people believe that their violent deaths, and the absence of a tranquil resting place forced their spirits to roam for all these years. Maybe they aren't even aware that they are dead. It's possible that they're still reenacting the conflict that killed them. The Emily Morgan is considered to be the most haunted in the city of San Antonio. By many accounts it is considered to be one of the most haunted places in the world, and according to USA Today, it is officially the third most haunted hotel in the world. It is common for guests to request room changes, or to just leave in the middle of the night because of paranormal experiences. So what do you think of the Emily Morgan Hotel? Let us know in the comments below, and as always please like and subscribe.